I'm actually not going to talk an awful lot about analytics. I am going to talk a lot about customer engagement. Uh, and uh, Kirsty, who uh, will come up a little later on, is also going to talk about the great things that she's been doing with Allo Media in Norway. So uh, I, I've been here for the afternoon. I think there's been some really great presentations. Uh, I loved everything that uh, Dr. Johnny Ryan was saying about ad blocking, something that we really believe quite passionately about. Um, and hopefully some of what I'll be talking uh, about in the next 30 minutes will actually put forward some ideas to prevent the rise of ad blocking. Um, in my role as head of publishers at uh, Google UK, uh, I work with a number of magazine publishers, uh, both UK-specific and global uh, publishers. A uh, quick show of hands, how many people in the audience work for a magazine publisher? Great. So there, there's a handful of you. So uh, I'm going to uh, tailor this presentation very much to you. Um, because obviously that's what FIP is all about, and hopefully it's going to be relevant to everyone else as well. Um, so, clicker. The magazines that we know and love are iconic brands. Uh, what other medium achieves the coverage that magazines do just for who they put in the front cover? Uh, we've seen a recent example of that, one of many uh, with Vogue and the Duchess of Cambridge. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get the rights to show that cover photo, uh, which is why we have David Beckham and uh, Edie Campbell, I think. Um, so they've achieved this status uh, and will, in most cases, retain high circulations in print because of the unique relationship that magazines have with the readers. The power of content has brought amazing longevity to many magazines. But now that content is more widely available, it's the power of the brand combined with content that will sustain that relationship in the long term. Somebody who buys a magazine does so because they personally identify with the brand and feel that it represents a special part of them. In a way that newspapers and TV which are more fragmented and commoditized mediums, find difficult to do. So the Association of Magazine Media wrote recently about magazines' mission, uh, as you can read here. Uh, I won't read that out. What does it really mean? Well, the key words to look at are influence, inspire, trusted, engagement, and it's also important to note the relevance of advertising in this context. For some publications, the ads are almost as important as the content. Uh, all of this means that magazine publishers are uniquely positioned to take advantage of the growth in digital to deliver higher revenues, both from subscriptions and from advertising. The global market for, uh, for periodicals, uh, digital magazine publishing, is predicted to reach $35 billion by the year 2020, uh, which is pretty significant year-on-year -year growth over the next five years. And as I've already said, the unique power of the magazine brand and staying loyal to the brand is very important because this represents a true competitive advantage over pure online players. It's a strength that hasn't, in most cases, been disintermediated in the way that news has been. I'd be interested to know uh, from publishers in the room if that's something they, they agree with. Maybe we can talk later about that. But before we start to think that everything in the magazine publishing world is rosy, there are obviously some challenges that the sector faces. So it won't be the, uh, the first or the last time that you hear that uh, word millennials over the, uh, the course of today and tomorrow. Um, but business today is not the same as it was last year or even yesterday. Uh, our business is changing very rapidly. 
publishers know this more than most businesses, and magazine publishers are not exempt from the trends of people moving very much to the mobile world. Traditional, that is, print and digital publishers have a two-pronged business that has a strong dependency on audience. They have marketing to acquire customers, whether to print or digital subscriptions. And then they have sales to sell advertising to the customers that marketing would acquire. But if you're a pure play publisher, it's a more causal link. Come in. The more people, the better. Please have a seat. You're only 10 minutes late, so that's OK. Um, so yeah, if you're a pure play publisher, it's a more causal link. Great content equals more audience, equals more advertisers, equals higher revenue. So let's have a closer look at magazine digital audiences and how they like to consume content. Two facts jump out here. Only 30% of digital readers are also print subscribers. And almost 50% of online readers are millennials. There's that word again. This means that the lifeblood of your publications, the new reader, new subscriber, whatever their interest, is consuming their media in a different way from previous generations. He or she has not developed a loyalty to the brand that older readers have and is just as likely to find content that interests them through social media channels as through magazines. I would argue that the majority of magazine publishers have failed to take advantage of the power of their brands in the digital world and the unique relationship their readers have with their content. This is especially the case in mobile, where we see most of the growth in our business. And let's be honest here, transferring the print strategy of many magazines to online has had limited uh, results for magazines, particularly where uh, a PDF or a pure replica of the print edition has been uh, put up as an app. On the other hand, it's not all bad news. Uh, Will at Condé Nast, uh, I'm not sure if anyone from Condé is, uh, is here today, um, but he believes that apps do play a role. And I would go even further than this statement. I think it's disappointing that more publishers are not taking advantage of fully responsive websites and apps to deliver content and advertising to their users based on their specific interests. The ability to do this in desktop has been around for some time, and it's possible to more personally engage with audiences without endangering the essence of the magazine brand. Your users are migrating to mobile very, very quickly, and to succeed in mobile, you need to adapt how users consume your content while staying loyal to your brand. So to do this, there are four basic rules to follow. I'm not going to go through each of these in detail, um, but I'd be very happy to do that one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, at a later date. Um, what you will see in the case study from Allers uh, in a few minutes is how one publisher is addressing these challenges very, very well, uh, which is a great example of how pub magazine publishers don't need to be stuck uh, in a traditional mode. One quick plug for uh, our products at Google. We've recently launched our Analytics 360 proposition for publishers, which provides a huge volume of audience analytics, fully integrated with our tech stack, which makes your decisioning of, on content and audience interaction more meaningful. For many magazine and even news publishers, when looking at new ways for users to interact with the brand, there's been an ongoing debate on investment in apps against mobile web. I would argue that it's not an either or decision, but that you should be investing in both for different reasons. Mobile websites and apps are complementary rather than contradictory. Both deliver benefits for the publisher, some of which you can see here. So mobile web 
It's really about delivering reach and scale, bringing an audience in at the top of the funnel. It's very much an acquisition strategy. Apps drive greater user engagement. They build loyalty, and it's a head of the funnel loyalty strategy. People seek out great experiences, whether they're consuming content on the web, in apps, across every screen. And savvy publishers have responded by building smart, responsive websites and new app interaction models. And let's not forget the advertising experience for users in both web and app is equally important. So uh, uh, apologies for the very bad graphic on this slide. It's really not, um, not doing justice, justice to, uh, to native ads but hopefully we can get the message across. Uh, publishers need to evolve their advertising strategies as well as content strategy, moving from boring banners and contextually, uh, to flexible and contextually relevant native ads that scale across all screens. We believe at Google that native ads are better than banners when they're done well. This is particularly true in mobile, where traditional banners have not been super effective I'm sure we all know that. What Native does is it enables you to put some care into your ads, as, as much care into your ads as you do into designing your site or app, which means a much better user experience and more effective ads for advertisers. So we see the shift to Native as a healthy long-term trend that will improve the ecosystem. And there are a whole generation of publishers out there in the marketplace who only use native. Publishers like Snapchat, for example, who are highly unlikely ever to run banner ads on their site. So I'm delighted to announce uh, today uh, the launch of cross-screen native ads from DoubleClick. Uh, this is extending the native ads for apps solution that we announced last year and it's to work across all screens, on the web, on mobile web, and in-app, making it easier for publishers to set up, deliver, and measure directly sold ads everywhere. And running native ads across all of the publishers' digital inventory has until now been an operationally complex operation, requiring hours spent manually coding, and compiling individual ad creatives from advertiser-provided assets. Now DoubleClick for Publishers supports native creatives that easily scale and adapt to different content layouts on different screens. We've worked hard to make this as simple as possible in three easy steps. One, advertisers can provide publishers a set of components that make up their ads, the image, headline, copy, and all relevant parts. Two, publishers can set up a central library of native styles suited to their unique content. And three, DoubleClick will do the hard work and automatically compile the creative from the components, applying the right style based on where users are consuming content. These native creatives can run in both traditional banner slots and a new fully responsive fluid ad slot in the Google, Google Publisher tag and Mobile Ads SDK. And most importantly, ActiveView, our viewability measurement, and third-party measurements are also fully supported. Kirsty, who I'd like to introduce, Head of Operations at uh, Aller Media in Norway. Uh, Kirsty, please come up and tell more about how you achieve these great results. Thank you, David, for uh, inviting me to uh, present with you. Uh, I think it's not every day that I can stand here together with uh, Google and, and speak to an audience like this. Um, uh, my name is Kirsty, and I work in Allo Media in Norway. Uh, we are one of Norway's largest news and magazine publisher. Um, Today I'm here to speak to you about uh, a journey we had with one of Norway's most known brands on the magazine part, and that is KK. Hopefully I will give you some inspiration in the next 
10 minutes. Uh, we do bring with us an old legacy when we talk about Coca. It was a weekly magazine, was, the weekly magazine was launched by a mother of four, Laura Aller, way back in 1874. She was pas passionate about making a magazine that could be for help and support for women. Uh, it was called Nordiske Mønstertidene. Uh, today the magazine is called Coco, and the vision is still the same. We want to give women tips, guidance and inspiration. Actually, uh, this year we have a 10 year anniversary for when we first launched KK on digital platforms. And as you can see here on uh, the, the, the previous slide, uh, it, was, it, was, it was about time that we gave her a really good facelift. So um, we started with the design process uh, to put together a, a great team. Um, we worked together with our design agency, but we also need to uh, uh, involve uh, sales, the rest of the editorial teams, advertisers, <coughs> ad operation, development teams. Uh, it was really important from the start that we had every stakeholders involved in the process so we had all the um, different considerations taken in, into account. Uh, when we knew that we have had all the stakeholders involved, uh, we started to look on what kind of platforms uh, the readers of KK actually consumed our content. Uh, the readers, it was actually our most important stakeholders here, um, uh, are heavily shifting from desktop to mobile as the rest that we see on news publications and all that. So mobile first was the key pillar uh, in the KK's remake, both as far as the user experience, but also <laughs> on the commercial products work was concerned. Uh, what we wanted to do with the remake, we wanted to um, recreate some of the feelings that we have when we read a magazine on print. It should be easy to read, beautiful pictures, nice fonts, stories that engage you, but also navigation that wants you to want to explore more. Uh, we did, uh, we did decide actually to uh, produce our front page as a feed. We thought about Facebook and blogs uh, rather than traditional websites. Uh, it is an infinite and continuous scroll when new articles are published, published from the top. Of course, there are some editorial changes, but uh, not that much actually. And we have been talking about doing personalization, and I think we will come there after a while. So that's the next steps. All the way from the beginning, we discussed what kind of commercial formats we want to implement on Coco. Uh, I've been through these processes before, and often we on the commercial side comes along very late on in the process, in the design process, and when they're finished with the design on the editorial and the content, then we can add some ad ads. And, but all the way from the beginning, this time we were included in the process. And I think that is an important thing to, to remember for all, uh, other editors. Um, we had several considerations to make. What kind of advertisers do we have? What kind of inventory are they buying? And what kind of sales channels are they buying the inventory from? Uh, we also looked on the fill rate on every format, the eCPM level, and the total earnings. And of course, what format does work across device? That was really important. We actually did something bold. In Norway, we have this big format called wallpaper. It's like a big horseshoe surrounding the contact, and it, all, all, it only works on desktops. So this is the most bought format, actually, a branding format, at least, in a way. 
And so it's kind of what it was kind of bold for us just to remove that. But we don't think that format will live in the future. So um, we couldn't really exclude readers on mobile and tablets. So we had to remove that. So um, in addition to the IAB and the Nordic standards on display formats, we came up with a full screen, fluid full screen display format. Uh, in this process, we worked closely with DoubleClick. And we were offered to be a beta partner on the new fluid ad slots on this, rips and, uh, on this responsive ad tag. Um, another important matter was to secure as high active view as possible. <laughs> We know that click on banners with low active view can be valuable to some advertisers. It depends on the KPIs. Uh, but if we want to charge premium prices and attract more brand advertisers, we, we need to acknowledge that inventory needs to have a higher active view than we had before, at least. And with that as a fact, all our uh, and that our site is an infinite scroll, we needed to, uh, to implement lazy loading. So what we have seen so far uh, is that we have increased viewability by 88% on mobile. We are still tuning on our placements and I think that's an, an continuous work um, on the way that the, the site uh, develops. So we are not finished and we are always looking on the active view. Uh, but it's fun to see such great results already. Here's another example of um, our full screen format. Uh, the idea was to offer a user friendly and highly attractive format to our premium advertisers which could fit well into the design of the, the, the site. The nati this native format, and, it, and it's actually built within the website. It's, it's integrated in the site. Um, and we think this is perfectly integrated with the KK brand and design. It's bright colors, and it's um, stylus pictures, if you want to. And uh, it's brand awareness as its best. This shows uh, the viewability uh, on the full screen format. It's 93%. As I said in the video, it, it is amazing. We haven't seen this earlier on any of our formats. And I think um, we can charge now much higher prices than we could before. And uh, you can engage with the audience much more with this format. And so far, the feedback from our readers has been quite positive. If there's something wrong with the advertisers' ads, it's more like they think it's too much. Not the, f uh, the full screen, but the other, uh, uh, the other display formats that we have. So, what are the next steps? First of all, this format deserves that the readers can interact with it. The double-click fluid tags are still in beta, but we are really looking forward to see what we can do with which media here. We have been testing a little bit now, and we have one actually on now, uh, the L'Oreal case, which you can interact with, different shampoos uh, and, uh, and all that. And we are really looking forward to uh, put more rich media into it, videos, and make it possible maybe to, to buy directly from the, uh, from the format. Uh, maybe possibilities to share offers the advertisers do have. <coughs> and of course, all formats that we are launching at uh, Dogblood and Allo Media, uh, all the way from video to mobile, we want to make them available through programmatic uh, channels. Uh, we're also testing that with DoubleClick as well now. Uh, both on the wallpaper, which is on, is on the rest of the sites, but the, the next now is the full screen format. And that's exciting as well. 
because of the positive feedback on the full screen, we have decided to offer this on other Alamedia sites. We launched this format on Dagblada. It's Norway's third largest newspaper. And um, I know in UK it's not maybe a really big number, but we have one million daily readers uh, on this new site. And, and I think for me as ad operations, uh, it's both nerve-wracking and also really uh, uh, exciting to do this. We have been struggling a little bit, but uh, I mean, the advertisers and the readers are not that, um, they really love it. So, um, but I think for us to succeed uh, further on with this, we need to work really hard and close with the ad agencies and uh, media agencies. Uh, this is still work in progress, uh, but I think that we are all eager to offer our advertisers a space where they can really interact with their audience. So uh, it's an exciting time, exciting time for us, and I really do uh, love the tech business, and I have been introducing the programmatic world into to our own media house. But in all this data-driven and programmatic world, I think it's really, really fun and important to also speak about things that. Uh, makes uh, the, ad, uh, the agencies and the advertisers more creative um, and uh, have more branding formats. So thank you for listening this late in the afternoon. <laughs>